Hi friends, welcome back. We're talking about the stock market, the Fed, inflation, and dog with hat. <laughs> you heard that right, dog with hat. Anyway, let's just jump right in. This is the headlines today. Uh, Powell reiterates, Fed doesn't need to be in a hurry to cut rates. And if you fall on this stuff, um, the market really wants three rate cuts. Uh, the Fed sort of indicated that, which I'll show you guys in a moment. We'll talk about that. And uh, also too, the actual numbers came in from the PCE. So it's another way to measure inflation. It says here, Key Fed inflation gauge rose to 2.8% annually in February as expected. And you remember the Fed is trying to target a 2% rate of inflation. Uh, moreover, you can see here, so uh, that 2.8%, so that's excluding food and energy, right? Um, but obviously food and energy is important. Uh, so you do wanna take all these factors into consideration. Um, my understanding is that likely we'll see uh, increased energy prices uh, coming. Um, there's been a prediction that uh, gasoline will be above $4 uh, in, in sort of the average nationally in the U.S. Uh, coming soon. Uh, moreover, uh, we also have that um, shipping accident. I'm sure, I'm sure you guys heard about it in Baltimore where the um, the ship hit the bridge. Uh, that may or may not, I, I think, chances are will uh, affect shipping costs. So that would make prices increase. Uh, moreover, I mean, take a look at this. Uh, it says here, consu consumer spending is up 0.8%. And then um, that was actually ahead of estimate and then personal income also increased. Um, this is actually an, an interesting thing because, um, and, and you can see it was a little bit softer than they thought, but um, you wanna track this stuff because uh, do people have enough money to buy uh, at these higher prices, right? So if they do, then prices would stabilize, right? Now, theoretically, if people don't have enough money to pay the higher prices, then prices should fall. But that's sort of why also too, we track shipping costs and these kind of things because uh, companies still need to make said things and hopefully add a profit. And also too, when you're talking about profits, then you're tracking uh, what is the market doing, right? So uh, all of these things are in relation. Um, that's sort of, I, I try to give you guys as much info as possible. And I know it's complicated to track all these things, but um, also too, you gotta think about in your neck of the woods, um, what is the price of housing? What's the price of fuel? Uh, do you feel like people are being hired or fired and are people getting raises, right? All these kind of things that, that we take a, to consideration. But again, your particular uh, neck of the woods, your region, your city may be different uh, than mine. And moreover, um, we also look at the national average as well. So I uh, keep all this stuff in mind as we go through these things. Um, here's another headline here. It says Federal, uh, uh, Federal Reserve Chair Jay Powell expects U.S. inflation to keep cooling in the coming months. Uh, they've been saying that for a while. Um, I think this last bit is gonna be tough, right? Uh, and the other issue, which I mentioned several times, is that um, inflation went up quite a bit compared to people's uh, salaries. So it's not that prices are coming down, it's just that they're increasing at a slower pace, right? That's sort of what we've been talking about. Um, so it says here, US inflation hit 2.5% in February, according to the headline personal consumption uh, expenditures metric that the Fed uses for its target, meeting expectations, but slightly, uh, but rising slightly from 2.4% in January. And uh, moreover, this is a quote from Federal Chair Jerome Powell. I guess he does, said this in San Francisco recently. It says here, is progress on inflation going to slow more than two months? Um, our position is, we don't know. <laughs> well, he's honest. Um, uh, we'll tell you what we'll do if inflation does come down. That's the base case. That's what we expect. So um, they're just saying they uh, expect inflation to come down. And then this is the projections of sort of where people are getting the three cuts. Uh, this is the current rate. So there's a couple people at the Fed that say, hey, you know what, let's keep it at the same for uh, 2024, which is here. A couple more say, let's maybe cut maybe once. Uh, one, one, two, three, four, five people say, hey, how about, um, you know, a couple cuts. And then you have a bunch saying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, saying, hey, how about three cuts? Now, do keep this in mind. This is all assuming that um, cuts are 0.25% or 25 basis points, however you wanna say it. Uh, also too, these are just projections. They haven't actually done anything yet. This could just be lip service for all we know, and uh, chances are it is. So um, my particular point of view on this stuff is, is um, probably they don't do anything this year. So we'll see. Um, you know, you do keep track of these things and kind of what they're saying. And um, it's interesting because they have their projections this is the dot plot that was released. And then suddenly right after that, then you have a bunch of the uh, Fed people speaking publicly more hawkishly. So, you know, you guys make it this what you will. Um, and again, this could all just be lip service and then nothing may happen. Now, uh, we do track all the numbers of this stuff and I want you guys to get used to these things because oftentimes people say, hey, Chris, 
uh, what should I do with my money? <laughs> and uh, best thing that I can help you guys is, is like, cause I don't want to manage your individual situation. You got to figure that out for yourself, but I do want to keep you informed. So you at least have an understanding of what the options are. Um, so if you take a look at this, um, the two year treasury is at 4.63, the 10 years at 4.21. So we're still inverted. Uh, it's crazy. It's been like that for so such a long time. It's been um, sort of um, the norm as, as of lately. Uh, moreover, if you want to take a look at um, uh, sort of different ways you could play this. Uh, so if you just want to throw your money into the S&P, uh, that's basically your safest play in terms of some of your money. Don't don't think that I have to put all of your money in the, the stock market all the time. You can have some cash. You can have some bonds. Uh, you could also be paying off your debt, especially if it's high interest rate credit, credit cards. You want to pay paying off those first. Or you can throw it in the S&P 500, right? So let's say all inclusive. Um, and uh, I want you guys to compare now. This is a really key to understand, though, is that past performance does not equal future results. This just gives you an idea of like how these things move. So which is kind of interesting, though, I was noticing this here is um, the last three years, S&P is up, say, 32 percent, the Dow up 20, Nasdaq up 40. But it seems like a lot of this stuff has just been in the last year. Because look at this, the Nasdaq 44 percent year, uh, Dow 22 and the S&P 32 percent in the past year. So it's interesting how the the year uh, the past year and then also to the three years is kind of the same, which is fascinating. Uh, the micro caps, the ones that begin getting hit the most as the little companies uh, last three years down 16 percent. Um, if you want to take a look at sectors, which is also good to look at as well, um, you can take a look at this. So the past three years, um, the big winner has actually been energy. You guys can see this right there, followed by tech. And then I'm looking, just looking at the chart here, then healthcare and also industrials are in the mix as well. Um, this past year, um, has it been energy? No, actually. Uh, the winner has been, um, just looking at it here, looks like communication services and then tech. Um, the loser seems to be, um, or at least the underperformance is the way to say it, uh, real estate and utilities. It's been like that for a while. And um, generally what you want to be thinking about always is buy low, sell high. Who doesn't know that? So we'll see if the uh, laggards do catch up. Uh, the real estate one's an interesting one because um, essentially uh, you guys know we, we're, we're watching for the uh, commercial real estate collapse. I expect that. Um, no one knows exactly what's gonna happen, but we can just see it coming. Um, every now and then it pops up and rears its head. Remember we heard about the, um, was it the New York community bank was recently had big problems. And, um, essentially what it is, is that we, we know that these essentially people took out a bunch of loans to buy this commercial real estate. We know that the, these people aren't paying said rent and it just sort of like, okay, uh, are they eventually going to make these payments or not? And if not, and then how far does that cascade down the line, the domino meaning that like. Jack didn't pay George and George didn't pay Sally and Sally didn't pay Sue. And like, how long is that going to take for that to develop? And will people start end up paying? Um, chances are not, I'm talking about commercial real estate here, um, mostly because, um, you know, with the whole work from home environment, um, people don't need that office space anymore. Moreover, uh, there's been a lot of sort of like startup ease and just different companies have been failing. Um, I want to say it was recently, it was like this past week, uh, it was Joanne Fabrics, I think filed for bankruptcy. Um, if you guys know, that's like a popular place where, um, they would usually be in those strip malls and um, uh, they would, you know, sell fabrics, <laughs> Joanne fabrics. Um, also, too, if you want to track this, and I like to look at this stuff you guys with you all the time, um, is different types of stocks. So you can take a look at sectors or types. So this would be your key value, growth, quality, et cetera, low volatility. Do you want, you know, income um, ones, uh, dividends, et cetera. So in the past three years, uh, quality has been the uh, sort of the performer at 34% increase. And then you would have high dividend at 18. So um, not so big of a spread there, as you guys can see. Um, but it depends which way you want to play it. Uh, moreover, this is something as well I thought is interesting, is that how is the US dollar doing to other currencies? So the big news for me was um, there was a headline recently that said like uh, the Japanese yen was down to like 1990 levels, some crazy number. And so the dollars gained on the yen was at 37% in the last three years, which is crazy. Um, I think I want to say, oh yeah, here's right here. I can, I can just tell you it's right here. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think it was like a $1 equals 150 yen, but it's right here. It's actually 151. Uh, when I was in Japan, um, I lived there. I want to say, I want to say it was like 107 or 110 or something like that. I, I can't remember exactly, but it, the, 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 the yen was really strong back then in comparison. So this is actually a massive change. Um, and I'll be curious, like, um, you know, what happens with, say, the can Canadian dollar, that kind of stuff. If uh, indeed it is cheaper to go to Canada, and, uh, it's in the last past three years, the dollar's gained, you know, about 7% on that. So I wonder if Americans will start moving up there. Um, it actually matters quite a bit, um, the, the, the currency exchange. I know we don't talk about it every day on the channel, but, we, but I do mention from time to time. 
Uh, basically, uh, makes it easier for USA to buy goods from other places, but harder for us to sell uh, them our goods, right? So um, ultimately, though, this will go back into balance. But right, at, right now, at the moment, the dollar is quite strong. Um, if you want to take a look at the market um, as a whole, with the Schiller PE, are we overvalued, undervalued, equal valued, right? Fair valued, however you want to say it. Um, this suggests overvalued. It's been like that for a while now. Uh, the reading here in this is, again, this is the price of stocks uh, compared to how much companies earn. Uh, the reading is at 35.4. Uh, the medium in the, in the mean for this is usually around 16, 17, something like that. So pretty high. Uh, usually when it gets to these higher levels, you know, like um, close to 40, I uh, do expect a market pullback. So that's what I would expect. So, you know, we'll see. And, and there's a couple things I want to show you why, <laughs> why our market's always funny this way. Um, because, you know, like, for example, every time I, I, I mentioned the, the China property thing, um, you know, it's not that, uh, that they solve their problems, it's just that we don't get necessarily news. Uh, the last news that I mentioned to you before was that um, it was a country garden is going to delay their report. Um, and so chances are they're, they're going to halt trading on that thing. Um, I was looking at this, it was kind of interesting. Um, this was uh, some of the other um, property developers over in China. You can see here they've all um, reported losing money. I guess this Vanky one um, actually did get some money, but um, there's worry that the country garden will drag them down also. And uh, it was saying here, it says, among 23 property developers, and this is in China, among 23 property developers that have released earnings, 14 announced a net loss, six reported shrinking profit, and then just three saw, saw mild gains. So the growth just isn't there anymore. Now, what's interesting is that in my opinion, um, this kind of stuff, uh, chances are there's people who are you know pulling their money out of the Chinese real estate and probably putting in the crypto. Um, I say probably because like, where's this money coming from? Uh, I, I mentioned the dog with hat before in the intro, but evidently this is what we're all gambling on now. Dog with hat becomes third largest meme coin as Bitcoin clings to 70K. So this is a real uh, coin and that's a real cute dog there with a hat. And that's the name of it, dog with hat. Uh, hits all time high and it flips Pepe as the uh, and and you guys can tell me because I'm actually not sure. Someone mentioned in the comments that it's it's like 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 um, Pepe Le Pew like the skunk from the cartoon, but or is it Pepe or Pepe? Who knows? But that was another popular coin. But I guess Dog with Hat is the one on the rise. And um, for me, this kind of stuff is is funny because it represents the uh, bubblicious market that we are in and, and is back. Um, I didn't think this stuff would come back, um, but evidently uh, it is all the rage with the kids these days. Um, and uh, you can see here, Dogecoin is the top meme coin. At uh, It's been up about 40% in the last week. Shiba Inu is up there as well, 60%. And Dog with Hat is on the rise. <laughs> People really put this money in this stuff. It's really funny. Uh, up 87%. PP, uh, Floki, Bonk, Book of Meme. I mean, if you're going to have a meme coin, just, just name it what it is. Book of Meme or just go with Meme Coin. Um, and I guess the ticker is M-E-M-E, -E, meme. Oh, I could go with Brett. This is another real coin, guys. Cat in a dog's world. Uh, and ticker meow, M-E, or M-E-W, what is meow? And uh, then we have Baby Dogecoin and Slurf. So you guys can let me know your favorite meme coin. Um, I mean, out of these, I'm going to have to go with the cat one. So you heard it here. And uh, actually, it's been outperforming the dogs. 189% <laughs> up uh, seven, in the past seven days. And it's like... It, it's funny. I mean, when you look at the stuff, you're just like, why, why, why shouldn't I just you know throw my money in this stuff? The reason is because you don't is because it's unsafe, um, and that in any moment you can wake up and your money could be gone. So that's the main thing um, for me. When when I show you guys the other stuff, you know the uh, different funds or different sectors stuff like that. Uh, sleeping well at night is key, and also to knowing that you are you know building towards um, essentially uh, uh, you know piling up your wealth and and you know ensuring that things that aren't going to just drop to zero and you know at a at a snap of a finger is a much safer way to go yes you can make money with these meme coins but know that it is gambling just be real clear on that um and it's funny to talk about but you know i'm, I'm always like amazed that the names of this stuff and like people actually take this stuff seriously um my, my my opinion on these things is probably there's a couple you know big whales that maybe you know own the market cap on these things you can actually look that stuff up too i've showed you guys before on the channel um, if, if you investigate each coin, it'll show like like kind of like the distribution of it. And usually it's controlled by the whales. And then like people get in late because they say, oh my God, cat in the dog's world is going up a whole bunch. And they buy at the top and then the thing crashes on them and then they're like kind of left holding the bags. That's how this game is played. So be careful on that. Um, my personal opinion is just, you know, be safe with your money. Um, and, and rule number one is don't lose money. So <laughs> anyway, um, love to hear your thoughts on any one of these things. What do you think about and where inflation is going? And uh, always appreciate your time. And I'll catch you next video.